Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you why a snowblower will not shift gears. And here's the gear shifter. If I try to move it back, it's stuck. So the problem's not in the upper console. The problem is originating from inside the transmission and that's what I'm going to show you today how to repair. It's going to be a quick and inexpensive repair. Now I'm doing this on a Toro Powermax snowblower today, but the same principle will apply to most snowblowers. Now what I've done here is tilted up the snowblower like this on its front end. A good thing to do now is to turn off the fuel valve if you do have one on your machine. And you might notice a bit of fuel leaking from the carburetor. You can put a rag here to soak it up. It should stop leaking after a few minutes. And if your fuel tank is overfilled, there could be fuel coming out of the fuel cap at that point. This one was only half full, that's why it's not leaking. If it is leaking, drain out a bit of fuel before you start this operation. You can use a turkey baster to do this or disconnect the fuel line and drain it from there. Sometimes putting in a sandwich bag between the fuel cap and the gas tank helps as well. And again, make sure that your snowblower is nice and stable. The first thing you need to do is to remove the belly pan from your snowblower. In this case, there's four bolts over here and there is four bolts for the secondary belly pan here. Some snowblowers will just have one belly pan. Now to remove these bolts here today, I'm using my quarter inch impact with a 3.8 socket. Now typically there's four bolts holding this secondary belly pan. However, there's two bolts missing. There's one here that's gone and this one at the bottom has gone. So I will replace them when I reinstall the pan. And a good tool to get in between the snowblower and the wheel is a ratcheting wrench like this. And you can also go watch my review on these ratcheting wrenches. The link is in the video description. Now with the blower up like this, I can give you a better view of the shift linkage. If we start at the top here, I'll show you that the problem's not there as I mentioned earlier. And you can see that this part over here does move freely. Now if you follow the linkage, you're going to come right down to the belly pan. So right down to here, there's no issues. It's from here to the inside of the blower, there is a problem. Now if you follow this part to the inside, you can see it connects to this metal piece where I'm pointing to, which in turn connects to the drive wheel over here. And maybe some of you guys have already noticed what the problem is. Nine times out of 10, what the problem is, is that the shaft here rusts and in turn the drive wheel gets seized to that shaft. So when you shift gears, this drive wheel is supposed to move left and right depending on what you select. And if your snowblower hasn't been serviced for a while or it's sitting where it's damp or it's being left outside, chances are that your drive wheel will seize to that shaft. So now what I need to do is to unseize the wheel here from the shaft. Now the first thing I've done is put a rag underneath the shaft. I am going to be spraying some lubricant on it and I don't really want it to go on the drive disc. What I'll be using today to get started is some PB Blaster Penetrating Oil. I'm just going to go in there and spray it onto there. You got to watch with the PB Blaster because it comes out really fast. And you want to avoid getting it on the rubber wheel as well here. I did get a few little drops. And now spray the other side. And that's why I put the rag under there to grab all the drips. And now grab the wheel and try to move it left or right. There, I felt it move a bit already. And let's try it from up here. So it does move. It's a bit stiff though. I'm just going to pry on the wheel again to see if it's going to move. There, I got it to move to the left. Now with a 400 grit emery sandpaper, I'm just going to reach in and sand off the rust. Now if you move the wheel, you'll notice that the shaft will move and you can move it so that you can get the next section. And the PB Blaster does help with the sanding a bit. And I'm going to reach in with another rag and wipe that dirt off or the rust. And you can see the rust there on the rag. Now I'm going to try and move the gear shifter again. So it's still quite a bit stiff there. Now that the drive wheel's moved to the other side, I'm going to sand the other side of the shaft. And 
and again move the wheel to get every section of that shaft. And again I'm using a 400 grit sandpaper for that and there's the rust coming off. And now reach in with a rag and wipe it all up. And that looks pretty good now, I don't see too much rust. Now what I like to do is add some lubricant on the shaft again and what I will be using today is some lithium grease. It comes in a small tube like this. Or you could use whatever oil you have in your shop oil can. In this can here I have transmission oil and gear oil mixed. So either one will do. I've got a bit of grease on my finger here. Just put a thin film on every side of the shaft. You don't want to put too much grease or oil because if it gets on the moving parts like the two discs, your transmission will slip. And I'm going to try to shift gears again. And now it's nice and easy. Now I put the gear shifter all the way down because previously I had it up here. And the reason for that is so that I can access the other side of the shaft which I wasn't able to put grease on earlier. And lithium grease works really well for this application because it will not get hard even if it's really cold outside. And I'll try the gear shifter again. And now it's very easy to shift. And you can see inside here that it moves quite freely. And while you're at it, it doesn't hurt to grease the other parts of the shifter linkage. And you can even put grease here on the adjuster bolt because sometimes this part also gets seized. If ever you go to take this off and it's seized, just heat it up with a map torch. And now what I'm going to do is clean the drive disc at the bottom here with a cloth and straight gas. You can also use a card cleaner, you can use brake cleaner for this as well. And I just moved the shifter to access the other side. And you want to make sure there is no grease on there. And sometimes I even run the rag with the clean gas on the drive wheel. So at this point here I'm happy with the way the shifter is working and while I have the belly pan off I will be greasing the chains and the gears inside the transmission. And to do this today I'm using white grease because this is what I have the most available in my shop right now. You can use any wheel bearing grease or whatever grease you have. And it works good if you turn the wheels because you can easily spread the grease throughout the chains. Now be extremely careful greasing the gears because you don't want to get your fingers stuck in between. And you can put the grease on liberally. Again, make sure it does not go on the drive wheel and the drive disc. And now just repeat the same process on the other side. And I do like to lubricate the parts of the easy steer right over here. So I'm just going to spray some PB Blaster in there. Again, make sure it does not go on the drive wheel and the disc. If you want to avoid the whole grease thing, you can use chain lube. It's just as good as having grease on there. And as a matter of fact, I am going to use chain lube on these parts right here. And you can also use chain lube to lube the drive shaft bushings. And you can lube them from the inside here. And you can also use grease here as well. Usually I use grease, but this is just an alternative that I want to show you guys today. And it might be easier for some of you guys watching the video today. So guys, ways to prevent this from happening is store your snowblower in a good place. Get it serviced every year. If you're going to do it yourself, do exactly what I did today. Take it apart. Put some oil or grease on that shaft underneath. Move your shifter up and down so that the wheel moves from left to right and then grease all the parts that have not been greased that year. If you do this every year, your snowblower will last a lot longer and you're going to save yourself a lot of problems. Now what I'll be doing is installing the bottom belly pan here. On this blower you have to get the belly pan inside the casing and then start up the bolt. And now tighten up all the bolts.
And now reinstall the other part of the belly pan. Now that the snow blower is back down, I'm going to turn the fuel valve back on. And now you can see the gear shifter is nice and easy. And now I'm going to actually start it so we can see it work in action. So as you saw guys, it's not that hard to fix a seized shifter on a snowblower. Again, 99% of the snowblowers you're going to run across will have the same system set up for the shifter. They're mostly going to be a combination of a drive wheel, a drive disc, and the shaft that you saw that I took the rust off. Make sure to get the maintenance done on your snowblower every year, stored in the proper place where there's no moisture, and most importantly, do not leave it outside. Thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and have yourselves a great day.